Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Cosmic Chronicles. I'm your host, Kyle Dayton. We're pleased to have as our guest this hour, retired Lieutenant Colonel Wendell C. Steve Wendell C. Stevens, here my cat's got my tongue, and also Rick Keefe. Rick Keefe is a video journalist on the quest for answers, as Wendell as well. Wendell has been researching for over 50 years into the UFO phenomenon. Rick is also a video journalist into the subject. Also getting into, uh, I guess, a uh, little bit of government conspiracy, which you'll learn today here. Mm -hmm. Rick was born and raised right here in Tucson. Yeah. He is the creator and editor of the website www.ufohypothesis.com. That is ufohypothesis.com. And Rick is also an aspiring filmmaker who is also an author. He's working on a book about philosophy as we speak. Well, yeah. not as we speak directly, but his <laughs> current project, among many others, is a book of philosophy that Rick's working on. And in this hour, we will be discussing Rick's documentary video entitled S4 Informants in an attempt to answer this very basic question. Is there a secret cabal of certain multinational corporations working with our military using extraterrestrial technology or are working now with extraterrestrial groups? And has a separate government within the United States and acting above the law been created by this cabal? All right, and let me see, where do we start here? Rick and Wendell, we thank you very much for being guests on the show, and thank you, it's good to see you again, Wendell. I would say that's exactly what we see, that we see a government behind the government controlling affairs. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna hammer home with the facts and the information this hour, and I'm looking forward to having the talk on the show, and welcome again, and Rick, welcome to you. Thank you, I'm, I'm excited to have the opportunity. This is the first time this Connor Orion case is gonna be discussed on live television, and only the second time ever Wendell's talked about it in public, uh, the first time being in 2001 at the International UFO Congress, and he's never given another lecture on it since, and I think this is a really important case, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to be able to talk about it. Well, we are too, actually. Here, Rick, let, to start here. Cat's got my hair. My <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting over, I think, a cold, and I'm, the cough is bad. All right, what is S4? S4 For is a laboratory know. facility. Uh, four levels are... are <laughs> to us um, through a variety <laughs> of informers. It's within the Area 51 uh, confines in southern Nevada, uh, northwest of the Nellis Air Force Base Range. And uh, it's about um, eight and a half to 10 miles, I think, uh, to the s uh, southwest of Groom Lake Naval Airfield. Um, and S4 is alongside the uh, southern border of the Papoose Mountain Range, uh, right next to the Papoose Dry Lake bed there. And what makes basically S4 at Area 51 so special? What do you think, Wendell? Well, it, it appears that that was designated way back at the end of Project Red Light as a place to store uh, captured alien extraterrestrial vehicles. And they began to accumulate them in big tunnels between Groom Lake and S4. There's a number of them out there now. Oh, and uh, there's some specimens collected in a hangar facility at S4, according to the, the security guard that came to my house to tell me all about it. Yes, and that's where the documentary S4 Informer starts. Yes. It seems to begin back in 1991 when a man named, what he went by the name of Connor Orion, he contacts you to give you what he claims are photos and evidence from yes. S4 that there are flying disks and preserved alien bodies at S4. That's what he told me. And Connor claims to have been, been um, a SEAL, I guess what they call a black SEAL, and also a sentry at yeah, on level was, two. At he a, was assigned as a Marine guard at level two of S4, and he walked a regular beat inside. And they were, uh, they worked on, on duty four hours and off eight hours, mm -hmm. on four hours and off eight hours. So their schedules were constantly changing. And they had us, sergeant of the guard that they that supervised their patrolling their beats and uh, they lived that way hmm. they were they lived inside their they slept in the facility their meals were catered into them and then the, the leftovers taken out they weren't allowed to talk to each other when they were initially assigned there the names were taken away and they were given numbers hmm. Conor Orion's number fit right in with four other numbers that, in sequence, showing that four, those four men came in together from different locations, all unknown to each other, all simultaneously mm -hmm. assigned to the same facility. 
and also indicated the possibility that the team before them all left at one time for mm -hmm. some strange reason mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And Connor O'Ryan had a, had a big claim too. He said that one of these photographs showed who was the, the Secretary of Dick Defense? Cheney, Dick Cheney standing in front of a bay, one of the hangar bays, with mm -hmm. another man in a white coat looking at a UFO, a flying disc stored in that bay. Man, now that would be something. So that's, that's something. This was this was a full nine years, I believe, before Dick Cheney was vice president. Yes. All right, and Connor O'Ryan also claimed that S four was referred to as the museum. Why is that? He said that internally they called it the museum that there were other craft and bodies stored elsewhere that were more important and more recent than the ones in the museum. Oh, goodness. And Connor O'Ryan, he told you that at S4 Level 2, where he was a sentry there, that there are seven preserved alien bodies and seven flying disks, including a disk, quote, quoting him, and he got this on video, too, saying yes. this on your documentary, that this disk was apparently brought from the southwest U.S. and was apparently buried deep in rock sediment at least 1,000 to 2,000 years old. And well, Ryan also produces a drawing of that disc on camera, and he said that some of the craft there didn't fog up, there was never any dust residue on them, yes. and at least some of the discs had some kind of strongly magnetic properties on it, so strong that they had to slick their hair down with baby oil yeah. to keep from the, on the chair there, to keep from having their hair stunned on end. Yeah. Is that true? At this point, I'd like to also credit uh, Wendell's grandson, Jim Cox, who did Jim the videotaping Cox. of the testimony at, in which uh, Connor Orion, which was a pseudonym he was using, that mm -hmm. wasn't his real name. Wendell later found out his actual name yes. uh, mm -hmm. it, during the course of his stay at Wendell's home. And we can mention that too later, too. But uh, Jim yeah. Cox, Wendell's grandson, did uh, a large portion of the filming and interviewing mm -hmm. of Jim of uh, Connor Ryan, Ryan during that stay. And that, that was the second day. When you see the documentary and you get to see Connor Ryan's testimony, that was only the second day that Wendell and Connor Ryan were acquainted. And mm -hmm. they filmed it on a hilltop because of Connor's deep fear that he was being pursued mm -hmm. by Delta Force agents within his own group that were sent out to retrieve him and bring him back. Mm -hmm. So during this whole time, there was a feeling of paranoia, uh, a lot of worry, and uh, Wendell accommodated him as best he could in his home yeah. while th the man gave testimony to Wendell about the different things that were going on within the s We went out to a high point in the desert where we could see an approach from all angles, all directions, and interviewed him there where nobody could yeah, so. frustrate the interviewer to get, get in on it. Yes, I understand and, uh, and And then we carefully okay. secreted it so nobody would find out anything about it. And it was safely guarded by the sheriff's department. I had a question with, when you mentioned Project Red Light, what is that? Project Red Light was the project to convert the groomed naval auxiliary airfields from that status to uh, Area 51. To a secret, a secret base above top secret base. Mm -hmm. In fact, Wendell used to fly into Groom Lake uh, on his way mm -hmm. doing uh, missions all the time. And one time they stopped him and said, uh, you're no longer able to fly. Yeah.